time to go to the basement and really inventory my freezers and see how many tomatoes I have from last year. Still have tomatoes sitting out everywhere, guys. Um, and there's some down at the garden that need to be picked because I can see them from here. Well, literally this time of year, my, I didn't think I had as many tomatoes this year, but I think I'm, I'm wrong on that. So what I'm going to do is grab some of the 2022 tomatoes, and I think I'm going to start off dehydrating some. I like to use the dehydrated powder for a thickening for my sauces. If some of the sauces don't turn out as thick, like salsa or things like that, just whatever sauce I'm making, then I add the tomato powder. It, it adds a good rich flavor and it also, like I said, thickens the sauce up. So I'm gonna start with that and I'll show you guys how I actually dehydrate a frozen tomato. And then I think I'm gonna do some sauces probably in a couple days from now. So these are a lot of Romas. These will make good sauces. So I'm gonna work with those. And then these are some of my new ones. And then these are some more Romas. <laughs> All right guys, so before I start to dehydrate these tomatoes, I gotta take this up to my laundry room sink. And I'll show you why, because when you start dehydrating tomatoes, lots of liquid is gonna come out a lot. And if you wanna know how I know that, one Saturday night, I started to put my tomatoes in the dehydrator and I put like a little bowl underneath them because I knew it was gonna drain a little bit. Well, I didn't account for how much it was gonna drain. And I got up the next morning to go to church and I had tomato juice all over the floor. So I've learned another trick. Y'all, I'm sorry, my kitchen is a mess. I'm fixing to make some meatloaf for dinner. Get that ready and get organized here. So before you start to dehydrate your tomatoes, you're gonna wanna let them thaw a little bit, just enough to where you can start slicing them so you can make little slices for the dehydrator. So right now they're frozen. Um, obviously I couldn't get a knife through them, but before too long I'll be able to. Now the key is not to wait too late to where they're just mush and then you can't slice them. So you just gotta keep an eye on them. Now what I do is I set my dehydrator on top of one of these wire shelving or I'll lay one across here and I'll set it up a little higher just as long as it can drain down my laundry room sink. And I did that last time and it worked great. All right, so I'm back in the kitchen trying to get things ready for supper. And the tomatoes look like they're probably about ready. I might have let them go too long, actually, just because I have been running around crazy busy. Um, let's see. No, I think this will probably work. They're sliceable at this point, and I'm gonna put these pieces in the dehydrator. All right, now I'm gonna put as many as I can put on here because they will shrink down a lot of the juices will drain out of these. Once they're dried, probably tomorrow sometime, I will put them in my Ninja Blender and we'll blend them up really powdery. And generally, I kind of run them through a little bit more of a strainer because I like to get the seeds out. I don't really like the seeds in any sauces or anything I do just because it kind of has a little bit more of a bitter taste. Now, a lot of people eat the seeds. I just am not a huge fan. All right, I got all my trays filled up. I've got my dehydrator set on about 145, 140, 145, and just gonna let it do its magic. Now it'll probably start draining a whole lot of tomato juice before too long, but like I said, it's in my sink, so it'll go right down the drain. Hopefully no mess, and probably by tomorrow morning, things will start looking really good as far as drying out. And up here, this is what my tomato powder looks like, getting kind of low because we do use it a lot. You can put it in soups. You can thicken up, like I said, all sauces. Now tomorrow, probably after lunch, I'm gonna start working on my sauces. I have a lot of Romas, which I like to use. They're a real good meaty tomato. All right, I've had dinner done in the kitchen. I need a break, I gotta come outside. It's starting to cool off a little bit, sort of. The sun is starting to go over the trees, so I thought I'd go out here and water my flower garden show you guys how big my flowers have gotten and the teddy bear sunflowers have opened up and they are so adorable I want to show you guys those and my husband and Seth are out here they're working on the chicken coop so we have some fence panels up on the coop that have kind of rotted at the bottom and they need to be replaced so I got some of those the other day so they're gonna work on that we'll go down there and check on the baby chicks and look at them too 
All right, so I have some day lilies still, still blooming pretty good. These over here, I'll try to pull these off. That kind of encourages the other ones to keep going. This one's done, so it didn't last as long. My comb flowers, they're kind of drying up a little bit. They're almost done as well. Look how tall my zinnias are. They are taller than my fence. Beautiful. So many colors. Now I've got a big, tall patch of sunflowers right here. And they're getting pretty dried up too, but there's still finches all over them. So I'm not gonna take them down now. Still got a lot of bees working on them. And this is my big zinnia bed right here. And it's just absolutely full of zinnias. So pretty. Every color that you can imagine in different shades of each color. Really, really gorgeous. And here are my big marigolds. They're super tall. Some of them taller than me. And there's still a whole lot more blooms to be opening up. I've got yellow, orange, just really pretty. And then here's my little trellis that has all of my hummingbird vine, which has really grown in so thick. Look at that. Really beautiful. Nice and cool under here. Lots of flowers. The, they close off in the evening, all my hummingbird vine does. And they open back up in the morning. Stay open most of the day. But this stuff is just, it just keeps growing. Back and forth, back and forth, all over the place. Super pretty. I've got a little watermelon down inside of here. And that was a nice little surprise. It's still growing. Now, teddy bear sunflowers. So excited to see these little things bloom. They are so cute. They're just like a little dwarf variety, probably about three feet tall. Look at the blooms. Oh my goodness. They're just so beautiful. Such a different look. Absolutely love them. They kind of start off like this with little petals on them and then they fill out completely like that, which is really neat. So all of them will end up doing that. And you can tell the birds have been eating these up here because there's all kinds of seeds that have fallen on these leaves. They are really enjoying that. And this gal right here, she's keeping a watch of my flower garden. But look at these zinnias. Super cool. Love the petal on this one. And that color, just like an off-white peach color. Beautiful orange color. Now, there's one back here that really caught my eye this morning I want to show you guys. And this is another beautiful patch of them back here. Wowzers. All right, check this one out. I saw it this morning. I've never seen one like this before. Definitely gonna have to save the seeds off of this one. Look at that. Is that not just gorgeous? Wow. Doesn't even look like a zinnia. It's amazing. I'm gonna do some watering and we'll go down to the chicken coop. My husband's working on putting those fence panels in and we'll check on those babies. Actually, I guess I could do that now while he's working down there. Let's go see. Y'all have been dealing with tomatoes all day. I kind of need a break from tomatoes. I don't even want to look at them right now. How's it going? Look at the chickens. Now, this is one reason why we put these panels up, because look at that. See how much they block the sun? They really keep it a lot cooler. And not only in the summer, but in the winter, they keep out the cold winds. So they really work good in both extremes. They are growing so quickly. Here's the little babies. They're really loving this little ladder swing perch that Eli made them. They've been on it a whole lot. While I'm down here, I'm going to check the beans. Oh, I see something promising. All right. There's the first ones. Y'all can see the little bean right there. Hmm. So far, nope, there's one. 
there's one they're actually just starting to emerge so this is a good thing definitely need to water them again the sun has been very intense all right so i have deadheaded some zinnias and when i do that i keep them in the basement i store them in specific spots each individual type of flower i keep my favorite ones and then i use these next year for planting and they dry here all winter in my basement now on these zinnias, all these little petals that you see around here, these will all be individual seeds. So I will get a lot of seeds from all these flowers. And in here, I'm keeping my very large marigolds. I've got sunflowers, different varieties. So I keep all of my flowers going year to year. I don't have to buy any more seeds. Good morning. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday. And I'm coming in here to check on the dehydrated tomatoes, see how they're doing. Oh wow, they look good. Probably need to leave them in here just a little bit longer, but they're starting to get really dry. And since I'll be putting them in my Ninja Blender, we are gonna want all the moisture to be out of them. That way they're not sticky or anything like that. So I'm gonna give them a couple more hours, check them again, and then maybe there'll be time to be blended down. And I've already got most of the tomatoes off the dehydrator trays. And this is what they look like. So they're ready to be put through the Ninja Blender to make the powder. This is my hired hand. Let's see how good it did. It smells good. Now, you can see the little seeds in there, but I take care of that through a strainer because I'm just really particular and I like to get those out of there. Now, this stuff really goes a long way. It's really, really strong, so you don't have to use a lot of it. So basically, I just sift it through here. All right, so here's what it looks like, leftover seeds. And then you take whatever I strained out of here and it's very fine powder. I think we're supposed to have quite a bit of rain over the next several days, so shouldn't have to water anything. That'll be really good for the beans. Well, I'm here. What do you think? Looks good. I like the color. All right, folks, this old woodworking greenhouse, no. <laughs> this old greenhouse. This old greenhouse woodworking edition. It's completed another project. This is the white oak coffee table. And it is turned out really nice. One of my better projects, Seth and ours. And there's the drawers. Of course, right here, you know, you got a <laughs> seat and sons. Yep. Yep, turned out really nice. Nothing wrong with this at all. I was able to do a mortise and tenon joint here uh, with this panel. It's actually mortised into these posts to hold everything really solid, which are still allowed to move because wood moves, you know, so it's going to move some. And I did the same thing back here. Also, this panel's one solid panel solid white oak, probably about five eighths of an inch thick, mortised into these posts. Makes everything really nice and solid. But that's it. Well, now I think I need some um, bedside table. I uh, know, it turned out really nice. Yeah. 
All right, on to the next.